So when Transformers Arise of the Beast dropped in theaters, there was a certain someone that a lot of fans, including myself, were expecting to see in the film but never did. That character, of course, was Transit. And the reason why so many fans thought he was going to appear was due to some test screening leaks that surfaced on the 16th of August 2022. That said that the film would start off with Optimus Prime fighting off and eventually killing a Decepticon that transformed into a bus. At the time, the name of the bus Decepticon was unknown to us until December 1st of that year, since the same day that the first Rise of the Beast trailer dropped. Several news sites reported that John DiMaggio would voice Transit, an existing character in the Transformers mythology that hasn't appeared in a live-action film. And on March 23, 2023, we finally got to see what Transit's robot mode would look like. And with him clearly transforming into a bus just like his previous incarnations, fans went wild since we haven't seen a bus former in live-action just yet which ultimately made him become one of the most anticipated characters, resulting in him turning into a meme for quite a while. However, as we know, he never appeared in the film, and there was a completely different opening scene. So then, why was he cut from the film and how was his scene supposed to play out? Well, thanks to the digital edition of the film, which came with a behind-the-scenes featurette, we now have the original opening scene for us to take a look at. You see, instead of opening on the Maximals' as homeworld, the film originally opened up with a monologue from Optimus Prime, with him saying that seven years ago he and the Autobots fled Cybertron as it fell into Decepticon hands, and in search of safety he led as many as he could to Earth. He then goes on to say that the Autobots now live in hiding, knowing if they were to be exposed the people of Earth would seek to capture and destroy them. He then ends his monologue off by saying that the Autobots cannot stay trapped on Earth any longer, and so to find a way home, he must turn himself from prey into hunter. Now, during this monologue, we would see this bus driving around, and when the driver, played by Dominic De Rosa, puts the bus in park, we get this reveal of a Decepticon logo. After the driver gets out of transit and into his own car, we then see Prime driving into the bus yard, where he transforms, saying, You cannot hide, Decepticon. I I came for your ship. Give it up and I will not destroy you. Transit, not liking this threat on his life, would ram himself into Optimus, but Prime counters by lifting him up and flipping him into the air, forcing Transit to transform. After saying hello to Prime, Transit would shoot at him. However, Prime wasn't having any of that, and used a bus as cover, kicking it towards him. However, Transit jumped over it and the two got into a scuffle, where Transit would pick up Prime and body slam him into the pavement, cracking it. However, Prime was not too happy about this and picked up a piece of pavement and slammed it into transit, stunning him. Prime took advantage of his opponent's dazed state and grabbed him by the back of the head, slamming it into a bus. After asking Transit where his ship was, he slammed him back into the bus and dragged him through it. Transit, not being too happy about this, would grab a nearby light pole and use it to throw Prime into a bus. After turning the pole into a makeshift shank, Prime had enough of Transit's games and cut his right arm off, pulling out the pole and jumping into the air, where he would stab Transit through the chest. He would then give Transit one last chance to reveal the location of his ship. However, the bus bot would say that he destroyed it, to leave Prime with no possible escape. As he tried to pull out his cannon, Prime grabbed it and turned it on Transit, forcing him to shoot himself and crash through some buses. As he lay dying, he would anger Prime by telling him that he would never see Cybertron again, and that he would die on this miserable planet. Prime would then shut him up by blasting him. So yeah, that's basically how this awesome scene would have played out. And with it being pretty far along in production, with some of the CGI being near if not fully completed, it begs the question on why this scene was cut. And well, we would actually get an official answer as to why the scene was removed. You see, on June 6, 2023, three days before Rise of the Beast would hit theaters, Collider had an interview with the director of the film, Stephen Capel Jr. When he was asked about how the film changed during editing in ways he didn't expect, Capel talked about the original opening, saying, um, But there's small scenes in there that just cause confusion. Uh, like one was this Autobot, or Autobot, this Decepticon scene, Transit, that I've been talking about, because Optimus Prime fights Transit at the beginning of the movie, or at least he used to. And it was a really epic fight scene, and then you saw Optimus Prime dump his body in the Hudson River, and all these Decepticons were dead, and you saw that he's been hunting for the last few years. So when we screened it, people were like, damn, this is kind of dark. 
<laughs> it was kind of dark, but I thought it was, it was a movie I wanted to make. But then I started to realize it is dark. It, it felt a little darker. Um, so we pulled back on that. Uh, and then we started to dive a little bit more into the maximal sort of origin story because we were trying to play with the sort of time travel, which is originally in the uh, mythology for the Beast Wars. It got just confusing. And I was like, how can I simplify it? So a lot of the rewriting and editing and post became how can we sort of simplify the maximal story so it doesn't confuse the audiences. So well, there you guys have it. Thanks to Capel's testimony, we know that the reason why Transit was cut from the movie was because test audiences felt that the scene was too dark. Now, based on what you all just watched me describe, some of you might be scratching your head a bit, thinking, how was this scene dark? I mean, it wasn't that dark, and you could argue that Demolisher's death in Revenge of the Fallen was darker than this. However, I think the reason why test audiences mainly felt this way was because of the second part of this scene, that we don't actually have footage of. During Cable's testimony, you likely picked up on the detail about Prime dumping Transit's body in the Hudson River, where we would then see a lot more dead Decepticon bodies. Now, unfortunately, it's impossible to know what this scene would have looked like. But in the same interview, Capel would explain why he didn't add the second part of the scene into the special features, saying, I won't release the uh, the Hudson River, him dropping the bodies, because that wasn't far along, because that was totally CG, even the world. Um, so we had a mixture of boards and a mixture of pre viz for that one. So yeah, based on this, we will probably never see the full version of this scene unless Stephen Capel Jr. or some other entity decides to make it public. Now, though Transit was cut from the film, remnants from a scene still appear in the movie. You see, after Elena accidentally activates the transwarp key, it then cuts to the scene of Optimus driving into the bus yard. However, now we can see the beacon from the key. The filmmakers would also repurpose Prime's transformation and walking shots as well, with them adding a new shot where Optimus looks at the beacon. So now the question is, was removing Transit a good call? Now, I can already hear some of you guys typing justice for transit, but hear me out when I say that cutting transit from the movie was a good call. Not because the scene was too dark, but because removing him ended up making the film a lot stronger. Now, I know this is a bold claim I'm making, but allow me to explain. You see, the opening of a film is supposed to tell the audience what it will be about, and helps highlight the stakes of the movie. For example, in the first Transformers film, the opening introduces us to the AllSpark, explaining that it is the reason why the Autobots and Decepticons exist and that they went to war over the use of its power, ending off with the statement that the AllSpark was found on Earth, and now the bots and cons have to bring their war to a planet that did not ask for it. This sets up what's to come fairly nicely, since the movie is mainly about the Autobots and Decepticons fighting over the AllSpark. If we then examine the transit opening, we learn that the Autobots are stuck on Earth, and Optimus is trying to find a way back to Cybertron so the bots can regain control of their home. We also learn that the Decepticons know that the bots are on Earth, and have been sending troops to kill the leader of the Autobots. With that in mind, one would assume that the film would be about the Autobots making their way back home, and potentially stopping the Decepticons. However, as we know, the film has a lot more going on than just this. This. Since we have the plot about the Maximals, the plot about Scourge and his Terracons, and of course the plot about the Chaos Bringer himself, Unicron. Furthermore, we don't see any more Decepticons in the film, so having the first antagonist that we see be a Decepticon while no other Decepticons appear in the film doesn't make that much sense. Now, if we examine the opening that we ended up getting, we learn about the Maximals, their technology, the Transwarp Key, which is the MacGuffin of the movie, Scourge and his reason for why he wants the key, and of course, Unicron. As you guys can see, this opening sets up way more elements of the film than the previous one and in my opinion is a better opening in general when it comes to spectacle. So with that said, I hope that this shows to you guys why removing the transit opening in favor for the one we got was the right decision when it comes to setting up the story. So now you might be wondering if the transit scene still could have worked in the film. And well, here's what Stephen Capel Jr. had to say. It was a really tough call, like the studio and us, like it took us a couple of weeks to figure that one out because we all loved the scene and we're trying to make it work, but it's just slowing down the film and kind of like, 
people already understood that he wanted to go back home. They didn't need that extra piece. And to Capel's right, since if you recall, unlike in the other Transformers films, the pacing of Rise of the Beast is very quick. And I honestly don't know where they would have been able to place this scene to still work with the pacing of the movie. Now, the bigger issue with the transit scene that I don't see anyone talk about is that it undermines the finale of the Bumblebee movie. To give you a recap, after Shatter and Dropkick learned that the Autobots are going to establish a base on Earth, the duo were going to send word to Cybertron so the Decepticons could send an army to Earth and finally crush the Autobot resistance for good, allowing them to win the war once and for all. During the final battle, Bumblebee was able to distract Shatter long enough so Charlie Watson could deactivate the machine that would send the message. Since Blitzwing, Dropkick, and Shatter were all killed, no Decepticon would have known that the Autobots were on Earth, keeping the Autobots safe. The original opening for Rise of the Beast would have severely undermined this plot point, since it doesn't give any explanation as to how the Decepticons figured out that the bots were hiding on Earth. And it doesn't make sense as to why the Decepticons would choose to send their soldiers in one by one instead of a full-blown army. So yeah, that's my reasoning as to why I feel that the removal of the transit scene made the movie stronger and helped keep its continuity with its predecessor. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is if we will be seeing transit again in a future Transformers movie. And though it's impossible to know for sure, I would say that it's likely. Since a CGI model has already been made for him, and and as we all probably know, it takes a lot of time and money to create a film-ready model, especially one for a Transformers movie. So I don't see why we couldn't see him again. And I really hope that we do, since we were robbed of seeing a bus former in live action. And with a robot mode design as cool as Transit's, I'm positive that we will see him again in some way, shape, or form. And just like that, you made it to the end of the video. If you're still interested in some more Transformers content, check out this video where I talk about Barricade's secret weapon.